easier. Uh, I sell real estate for a living. I've sold real estate in Garrett County for uh, just under 12 years. The first thing you realize when you start selling real estate is that uh, value is determined by numerous factors. Uh, location, um, size, uh, but certainly in our market the the one factor that stands out the most is going to be views, uh, whether it be lake views or valley views, but certainly um, mountain views that that go for miles and miles. People that were specifically interested in purchasing property that were within the view shed or a targeted piece of property um, never got to the stage where they were interested in making so much as an offer. Once they understood that the possibility of the wind turbines might exist there, they didn't have any further interest in that area. I live in Kings Mountain Resort, which is a small woodland community uh, on the edge of Somerset County near Fayette County. We did hear about the um, property devaluation and we have 70 homes in our area. Um, and I started to try and dig for information and uh, found a two residents near um, the Berlin turbine area that had sold their homes. and called him to see how he felt about that and what he experienced and um, was also begging him to come to the hearings because I thought his testimony would be very important in that he's gone through the experience of the negative impact of the turbines and um, it ran him out of his house. And as I talked to him, I could feel his voice escalate. He was explaining the strobing and how it really drove him crazy that he put uh, Louvelier blinds up in his house and that made it even crazier because the strobing was even smaller. Um, he went to a doctor to uh, get sleeping medication and um, the thumping. He would explain um, that he would complain to the wind companies and they would not respond to his complaints. Um, when they were being installed they said they had no regard for his property, that they would walk all over his property uh, that equipment would go back and forth behind his property and um, everything that he explained I could just feel him getting more and more upset. These deeds reflect amendments that basically are set up to hold the wind companies harmless from noise issues, from view restrictions, um, these are the same nuisances that we hear the wind company say that will never happen. So they're placing these amendments to a deed for something they say never occurs. Two specific cases here in these deeds, one property sold through the fire sale 80% less than the fair market value. And in the second deed uh, was a little over 50% less than the fair market value. So to say, does it appear that the presence of wind turbines are going to affect property values? Absolutely. He litigated, he went through an attorney and um, sold his property to the wind company. We tried to get realtors to come and testify, uh, get appraisers to come and testify at our hearings when we were trying to get setbacks for these turbines. and nobody would address the problem. Yes, I presented all the numbers uh, as far as what the homes did sell for and what they were bought for in the end, and he made the comment that the families basically got what they wanted. But in turn, the families didn't get what they wanted because they were run out of their homes, which were not their homes for a long time, and they had to pick up and move. I think it's important to understand the sequence in which these specific properties were sold. You have to keep in mind that we have a wind company that is in litigation with someone who owns a property in the shadows of wind turbines. Through litigation, 
the wind company buys this property at fair market value. They in turn sell it to someone who has wind turbines on their property at a fire sale, 80% less than the fair market value. I guess the question you would ask is, well, could you have sold it at all? Um, my understanding is that the other sale that occurred, the person who bought the other property at a fire sale of 50% less than the market value was an employee of the wind company. So I, I think that we might have two cases that show property devaluation, but the question is, is will people be able to sell their property at all? Well, who's benefiting from all this? The question regarding the taxes, when you know we were we asked at the hearing um, how much were the taxes going to generate, that was unclear. It it, it may be a hundred dollars, possibly two hundred dollars, and thus it, the individuals would go into then. Well, the turbines themselves cannot be taxed as an industrial facility because. They were basing them on what a windmill, a, a small windmill on, on a general property is, is listed as and the parts inside that wind turbine they were listing as, I don't know how they get around it, but there's a loophole. We understand very, very small amounts of local taxes and they won't give us a concrete answer. They say, oh, it goes to the school district, oh, it goes to this. And when we also ask them, why don't they increase and in tax their revenues, they said, oh, well, they are movable objects. They're not considered to be, they're considered to be detachable. Um, and the comment was made that, well, then my mobile home should not be uh, taxed because my mobile home could be moved anywhere. So they said, uh, and another uh, commissioner did say to me that, oh, to reform the taxes is, is too difficult a procedure. That, that, that takes a lot of time to do that, so we don't see that happening. So they, they did the, the runaround, and we've been given the runaround from state to local to um, township, and it goes round and round, everybody handing off the responsibility, and I don't think anybody knows what the other hand is doing until more questions are asked and more matters are pressed.